Welcome to another midday recipe. Okay, so we are here every single day at midday UK time sharing our recipes with you. So I'm Chef Day, I am founder of the Vegan Chef School. On some other days we have live recipes from some of our graduates as well. Today it is my turn. So the deal is that you guys can ask me questions, that is the beauty of Facebook Live and why we are using Facebook Live as the platform of choice at the moment. So I'm just going to get the live up on my computer here so that I can see all of your questions. So please, please, please do ask me questions today, in particular in this recipe. And the reason why is because there's going to be some downtime in this recipe. We're going to be making it together. Uh, some people might even be cooking along. So I did release the information on the ingredients and also the equipment earlier on today, this morning. Um, and so some of you may have the ingredients at home. I know it's a bit last minute, um, but they are like quite simple, straightforward ingredients. So let's just get the live up here and I'll make sure that I'm not sideways, which is always an added bonus. Um, so please do say hello if you have come in to the live. There I am, there I am. Okay, let's make sure I'm on silent as well. So thank you for joining me, everyone who is already here, Colleen. Quick off the mark there, as always. Right, there we go. Um, so, Arpita, Arpita is um, in the live today, but she's also an admin. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Arpita, for doing that. Kerry, thank you for joining us again. Gloria and Anne, thank you for joining us again. Um, so I was just saying that this is a really, um, it's an easy recipe, it is an easy recipe, but also we're gonna be making it in real time together. So what that means is there's no, here's one I made earlier. There's definitely no, here's one I made earlier of the final dish because we ate them. <laughs> so, <laughs> so there's none of that. Um, that's always a good sign of a recipe when I eat the here's one I made earlier that I meant to show you and now it's not here. So <laughs> we'll be making it in real time together. So that means there'll be some downtime. So that's a really, really great opportunity for you guys to ask me your questions. And I know from a lot of the activity that we've had in our community hub, in the Facebook group that we have, that you guys have a lot of questions when it comes to vegan food. And it's great to be able to ask them to a professional chef like myself. So please, 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 do think of your questions now and then when we get to those bits where we're waiting for stuff to cook and you know that type of thing then you can ask me them. Um, Sue so said hello day, still sunny, please can I ask which of the many range of green pans you have? I notice you using metal implements sometimes. I do use metal implements sometimes but I'm really really careful with them, really careful. Um, quite often you will probably see me using um, this thing. So. This is my spatula that is lovely and straight. I have a bit of a um, issue with spatulas that aren't straight. If spatulas are curved, then it can be really, really difficult to get stuff off the pan. Um, and so I really love this one. I just got this from a charity shop. Um, so yeah, uh, you know, it's lovely and straight. Really, really good for things like a savory pancake, omelets, you know, that type of thing. We're actually making a tofu omelet. Um, later on today filming it for one of our online courses um, so um, you know this is really really great for it because you really need to be able to get under there and lift up the whole thing in one go if possible and if you have like a straight bit then that really really enables you to do that I have one of these which is great for some things but it doesn't have that straight edge that I really really want when I'm dealing with something like a pancake or you know a tofu omelette or something like that so that's the reason but I am really 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 careful um, so the green pans that I have uh, I've got one here actually, I've only got two, uh, it's called, oh it's just called original queen pan, that's it, that's it, the code if you want it to have a look is 051812, 051812, so there we go, so I've just got two of them, it came in a pack of two, one big, one small, that's all I need. So love, love, love the green pans. I also really fun love with scan pans. I don't know if you guys have come across scan pans, um, but scan pans are brilliant, really expensive, so expensive. It was my clients that had them, not me, unfortunately, but a scan pan is one of those things that if you buy it and you take care of it, it will last a lifetime. So although they are expensive, they are worth it. Okay, right, okay, let's get 
on to making the custard tart. Trisha says, hello from Liverpool. Hello, thank you for joining us again. Uh, and she loves custard tart. Good, good, good. Okay, and um, we've got Samantha, and she's tagged somebody. Thank you, thank you, thank you for doing that. It's really great if you guys can share what we're doing. I think that it even comes up with um, a, a share of the live, so you can actually share this live while you're watching it as well, which is awesome, and of course you can share it after the show. Uh, but anything you can do that, if you can like pop it in any of the vegan groups, that would be huge help for us, thank you. Uh, Anne, I have some of the green pans, they are excellent. Oh, they are really, really good, really good, okay. So, now we start with our Just Roll pastry. So this is um, a gluten-free version, but of course if you're not gluten-free, you can use the type with gluten in it. Um, I think this is like the first one to come out with this type of pastry that is both vegan and gluten-free, which is amazing. This is puff pastry. Life is too short to make your own puff pastry. There, I said it. I know, I know. You would think that all our chefs would be making absolutely everything from scratch. Um, there is a lot of things that I make from scratch. I taught myself how to make short, short crust pastry, really nice short crust pastry, which I will happily make from scratch. But puff pastry is um, very involved. Very, very, very involved. Um, if any of you guys have tried to make croissants before, it's a similar process to that. So. Um, a lot of chefs will just use ready-made puff pastry, so don't worry about, you know, it's not chefy enough or it's not foody enough to be using ready-made. So with the puff pastry, we've always used the ready-made. Uh, with short crust pastry, obviously, you know, that's a lot easier, you can make that yourself. Okay, the rainbow was really easy today, which reminds me, I haven't even spoken about the rainbow yet, because I've been focused on the tarts. Um, yes, the rainbow is really, really easy today, because... I don't want you to guess where it is. Everybody knows where it is. Everybody knows because you look at the live and immediately you can see the rainbow. But what I would like to know is what is at the end of our rainbow today. So if you guys can tell me, what do you think is at the end of our rainbow today? Okay, so uh, Samantha said, are these suitable for one-year-olds? Okay, so uh, what the tarts, the tarts, uh, they might be a bit messy. They really, yeah, I think I think that that's going to be a bit messy. If, you know, you've got your, like, painting stuff out, you know, with a mat, and, you know, they're covered head to toe in, like, stuff, or, I mean, you know, I know uh, parents of little kids who would just get them naked for painting, because basically who's going to wash them afterwards anyway, right? They're going to get covered, you know, leave the nappy on. Uh, <laughs> so it might be the same thing with raspberry. So get the mat out, the raspberry tart, get the mat out, you know, get them just in a diaper, their nappy, uh, and then give them the raspberry tart and just expect that it's gonna go everywhere. It is just gonna go everywhere. But that might be quite nice, that might be quite nice. Kids love eating just like with their hands and getting messy anyway. Uh, Sue said, uh, oh yeah, you said about the rainbow. Thanks, I'll look them up, they have so many ranges. Yeah, that's the uh, green pans, they do have a lot of ranges. Um, Justine said, hello, I can cook along. Because I'm not really, yes, 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 yes. Good, good, good. Right, we've got someone who's cooking along with us. Colleen said, have been able to find gluten-free puff pastry in the US. Um, yes, it may be difficult um, depending on what country you are in. Um, this only came out in the UK, I think maybe about a year or so ago. Um, just Roll is already vegan. It is one of those uh, products that was always just accidentally vegan, basically. They didn't do it because they're like a pro-vegan company. Just that was the, the way that they had um, created their product, was that it was accidentally vegan. Of course now, they should just really, really shout about it, um, because everybody, you know, is really up for a vegan product nowadays. So, now we start with our pastry. Mm. Kombucha cocktail from yesterday. If you haven't seen it, please catch up <laughs> on the live recipe from yesterday, where we made kombucha and compare uh, cocktails and ice lollies. Okay, so in here I have half of my sheet. Um, so I cut it uh, when I was making the tester one last night, which, by the way, we ate in a flash. <laughs> I'm just gonna straighten this up a bit. There we go. Um, and so with this, we just want to cut it in two. If you're going to have problems uh, figuring out exactly where the half is, 
I am so pedantic that I really, really do want to cut it in half. And if I don't cut it in exactly half, then I get really annoyed with myself. So yes, I am that pedantic. So let's just fold it over and then we can see exactly where the half is. Jim and David, thank you for joining us. And Karen, hello and welcome back. Welcome back. Okay, so we can just cut that in half there. And then we have our two tart bases. So if you do want this to be a bit thinner, then you can make it a bit thinner by just using a rolling pin. Um, sometimes like it might not be quite the shape that we want. Obviously this is a bit elongated um, and our tart tins are obviously round. So it's better if these are more square. So we can just quickly roll these out a bit. So we're just making two today. Um, as you guys know, I have been making quite a lot of sweet stuff at the moment, and I still have a freezer full of it, thanks to you guys. Jeff is very happy. He's a very happy boy. Uh, pudding every every night, and sometimes at lunchtime too. So, <laughs> um, so I do try and make smaller quantities as and when I can. So this recipe is only for two portions, and that's it. Um, so we have our puff pastry here and we're just going to pop it into our tart tins. You don't have to do it in a tart tin if you don't have one at home, that's absolutely fine. So if you don't have one at home, what you can do is you can just get something that's round and cut out your shape and then get something else that is also round but smaller and just score around that inner circle that inner circle. So just to go over that again, get your bigger round shape. So say for example, like a bowl or a small plate would do really, really well on this and cut around that outer circle. So completely cut those bits of pastry off. So you've got a round, okay? And then to make the inner circle, use something smaller and also round, but just score into the puff pastry. Don't go all the way through, just score it. Okay, and so what this does is it means that that outer circle of puff pastry will really puff up, and then the inside, the inner circle, won't puff up as much. So you should be left with essentially, you know, kind of like a volivant shape, but bigger. You know, so an inner circle that has that is like a cavity, and then that outer circle that is a rim that is going to keep all of that filling inside. The reason why I'm not showing you that today is because. It can have different outcomes. It can be quite tricky to get it exactly right. So this method is a bit more foolproof. And I'm gonna use scissors. Uh, so Denise said, greetings and good morning from Savannah. What, where's GA? Where's GA? Let me know, let me know. We collect Americans on the show. We're getting Americans from absolutely every state involved in the show. And in fact, we're gonna do a special show for all of our friends in America one day, at a decent time, because I know that an hour isn't a decent time for you, so you're probably watching us at like five o'clock in the morning or something like that. Um, so, so we'll do a proper uh, dinner time show for you guys, so you don't have to watch us at breakfast. Um, and I think the suggestion is that we do something really, really British. So the suggestion was, I think, uh, tofu, fish and chips. Mushy peas as well, actually. We should do mushy peas too. I don't know if you guys are familiar with what mushy peas is. But in the UK, that's like, all those three things like go together really, really well. So I'm just popping the, uh, the pastry into the tart tins. And if you have a look at this method, so I am putting it in, uh, folding it in half again, and folding it into uh, quarters. And then just putting this corner down into the tart tin. And then I know that that is exactly in the middle. And the reason why I want to do that is because it can be quite annoying when you put your, your pastry onto the tart tin and it's just over one way, a bit too much, and then you might not have enough going over one edge. So that just helps with that. And you just want to be as careful with it as possible because, you know, some of this pastry, it can be a bit more delicate than others. Um, the first gluten-free uh, ready-made pastry that I tried just fell apart. I mean, like it just, 
really, really fell apart. So, you know, with some of them, you might have to be a bit more gentle. And, you know, you have to remember as well that the edges of that tartan are fairly sharp. So you don't want to poke a hole in something you don't want to poke a hole into, basically. There we go. Okay, so I'm not really pressing it into there. George, oh, GA is Georgia. Originally from Wimbledon, though. <laughs> I lived in Richmond for a year, beautiful, beautiful um, area. Bang is a match. Yes, that's another good one. I think we're going to do, end up doing like a whole series for all of our American friends, actually. Okay, so we're just going to be really, really cavalier about this. Uh, you guys will probably know from if you have seen my other videos that I am pretty cavalier when it comes to cooking because I just think that, yeah, okay, right, there is. A perfect way of doing things and if you are head chef of a Michelin star restaurant yeah, then yeah go ahead and do them you know and spend hours you know perfecting things and making everything perfect and blah 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 blah, blah. but I want you guys to see that um, cooking at home it doesn't need to be so pedantic it doesn't need to be so perfectionist um, you know, so I think that, that is like one of the biggest barriers to home cooks, you know, particularly in this country where, where shows like MasterChef have really, really taken off. But on MasterChef, I mean, they tell people off for like their soup being too thin or too thick. And really, that is a personal thing, you know, so um, don't worry. Don't worry about food so much, just have as much fun with it as you can. Okay, so here you can see I just really loosely cut those, um, cut the outer uh, bits off the pastry. Um, it's not really that even, it doesn't really matter. We're going to be really playful with this. We're going to end up putting icing sugar all over it anyway, so that really, really hides things. Ah, Cristiano from Piggy Rocks is on. And here's Chow, Chow, Chow. Um, so if any, any of you guys don't know, if you're not in the UK, uh, Cristiano, he runs an amazing pizza, vegan pizzeria. Pe pe <laughs> Sorry, he runs an amazing vegan <laughs> pizza restaurant. There we go. Uh, and they are also at the moment doing deliveries of things like flour and I think yeast and other bits and pieces. Cristiano, if you could put some details in the comments, that would be really, really great. And also maybe a link as well. That would be, would be fantastic. Johnny, thank you for joining us again. You'll be glad. No chocolate. Anywhere near this one. Okay. So, now, uh, we are going to poke a few holes with our fork into the bottom of our tart. Okay, there we go. There we go. And then we just need to add a little bit of either aquafaba or plant milk. So I'm just going to grab my plant milk um, from the fridge. Uh, and you can do this with a pastry brush. Um, I'm just going to do it with my fingers. Um, you don't really need a pastry brush so much if you are quite happy to get your hands involved. Johnny said that he's late today. <gasps> How dare you? How dare you? I did actually think, you know, God, he's late. But you're here now. So, we're making, just to recap for everybody who um, just got here a little bit late, uh, we are making a really, really easy raspberry tart today. Um, so, I actually asked everybody what they would like to see me making with raspberries. And the resounding decision was raspberry tart. So instead of doing just one raspberry tart, we're actually doing three. So this is the second of the three. The first one was a dark chocolate raspberry tart, uh, which involved no baking whatsoever. Really, really, really simple and easy. Also, it didn't include the use of a bag of flour, which I know is an issue for a lot of people at the moment. If you have this issue and you're in London, see Cristiano. Um, <laughs> so I decided, hey, how can we make some raspberry tarts but without bags of flour? So this is how we do it. Of course, you know, if you're using um, pastry, ready-made pastry that already has wheat in it, then essentially you are doing that. But what I mean is that it's hard to get hold of bags of flour at the moment. So. There we go. Um, as I said, you can base this with 
um, plant milk or aquafaba um, or even a little bit of oil, a little bit of margarine. Okay, and we're gonna pop these into the oven. And right, okay, so just so you can see, there is a little bit of a lip hanging over here. And we want that so that the pastry doesn't shrink back down into the tart tin. We want it to keep, um, you know, like this, so that we've got somewhere for our custard and our raspberries to go to. So let me just pop these onto a tray and into the oven. go guys let me see if I have missed any questions um, okay so Rosie thank you for joining us and Tor says yum uh, Gloria TV cookery program food is in the main something to watch rather than attempt to cook at home not saying it's unachievable for most people are never gonna try to reproduce it that is one of the very very strange situations that I think that we now have ourselves in in the UK and that is that um, you know, uh, we buy so many cookery books, so many cookery books. I think that um, out of all of the non-fiction books, cookery books are always the highest sellers. Um, they're always like breaking records and stuff like that with, with cookery books. Um, and people will have these cookery books, but they won't necessarily make anything from them. Um, so although we, we have it as part of our kind of entertainment or what people in the TV world call infotainment. So you know, you're watching something but it also is teaching you something as well, um, you know, which is a huge market these days, but how many people are actually putting those things into practice? I really, really, really do wonder. And that is why it was so amazing for us to see um, people in the community hub sharing pictures of the recipes they're actually making because one of the things I always thought with this like wonderful world of social media and the voice that it gives us is how do we help people to make real world change so I'm not I don't, I'm not interested in just sharing you stuff just for the sake of it it you know I'm, I really want to be able to inspire you to start cooking start cooking because I <clears throat> sorry I'm going off, I'm really on my soapbox here, aren't I? I couldn't cook before. I couldn't, like, when I was 20 years old, I couldn't cook, I didn't know how to cook at all. It was like, such a journey and I had to teach myself how to cook. I used to burn rice. There you go, I said it, I used to burn rice. So if I can teach myself how to cook, I know that I can teach you how to cook. <sighs> anyway, right, uh, let's go back to our questions and see if anybody else has said anything. Bobby says hello. Woo. Um, Johnny said any tips if you have no tart tins. So you could use a muffin tray as well. I have a little mini muffin tray which is super cute. So you could use something like that for any kind of muffin tray. You know, I have like some that are um, around like the size of like a golf ball, super cute. Um, all the way up to really big muffin trays like uh, that have uh, holes in it like that. Uh, but also, oh, you missed this bit at the beginning as well. Um, so we, let's get this back out again and I will explain. Um, so let's just pretend that this is our piece of pastry uh, because the pastry's in the oven now. And by the way, it needs 10 minutes. So it's probably about eight minutes now. So if you guys can just shout me when eight minutes goes by, that'd be great. That'd be really, really good. <laughs> so, so let's just pretend that this is our piece of pastry here and I will show you how to deal with it if you don't have a tart tin. But I will need the help of, so this and this. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, so this is our piece of pastry here. You put um, a wide, something circular, something wide, on it and then you completely cut around here so you cut 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 with a sharp knife and then you remove all of this okay johnny so you just remove all of that and you will be left with just a circular bit of um pastry and then what we do is we take a smaller circle and we pop it on here and then we don't cut no 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 don't cut we score, so just lightly score around here. So you've got this inner circle 
that is scored. And so what that will mean is that when the puff pastry puffs up, you know, this is you know part of the joy of puff pastry, uh, this outer circle here will puff up and this inner circle should stay more flat. Um, if it does puff up, then you can also just use the back of a spoon, which I will probably have to do on the ones that we've got in the oven, just to pat it down so that you've got that recess. Um, so you can do it that way if you don't have a tart tin or a muffin tray or anything like that. Um, so yes, just to recap, that is cutting this um, bigger circle, completely cutting around here, so you're left with just a round piece of pastry. And then you've got the inner circle and you just score that around here. And so that should mean that you're, basically you end up with like a massive bol of Essentially, that's what it is. Um, okay, so, oh, oh, great, Arbiter um, has been answering for you as well. Oh, that's a great suggestion. You can make a mould out aluminium foil by pressing it against the bowl and use that. That's a really, really great um, option as well. Doug, thank you for joining us. And Lara, thank you for joining us. And I saw earlier today, Lara had actually made our burgers. Um, if you guys are interested in making any of our recipes, a really, really good place to start is our burgers, which are proving very, very popular. And also the chocolate fudge cake. Both really, really easy, but with amazing results. Okay, so now let's get on to the custard. I'll bring over our hand blender here. And we're gonna be using tofu some sugar. So in here I've actually used coconut sugar. This is my preferred type of sugar, but you can use whatever sugar you're comfortable with having. And there is two tablespoons of sugar in there. We have half a tub of silken tofu. So it's silken tofu, not firm tofu. So this will, this is in total 290 grams. So half this is gonna be 145 grams. Uh, we have some vanilla essence and also some corn flour or corn starch. Okay, uh, so Colleen said it's very hard to see. I thought it was a bean. So she is making reference to what is at the bottom of our rainbow today. It is hard to see. It is hard to see. And Johnny, it's not a scoby. It's not a scoby. <laughs> I don't even know how to draw a scoby. Um, I'm just gonna check on the tarts in the oven, just a sec. Oh. Okay. Okay, so they're halfway done. We want them to be a bit cooked through. There are so many recipes that I see on the internet where you put a pastry base in, to, uh, in for a tart, um, and then you put a wet filling inside it straight away. Straight away. There's no blind baking whatsoever. And I know from the tarts that I've made that if you do that, what tends to happen is that base doesn't cook through. It just doesn't cook through. I don't know if you guys have had a different experience to me, you know, um, that, that might be the case, but for me, it has never ever worked. So I always blind bake the case. Um, I don't even with this put, um, you know, sometimes you see people put beans in there with some baking parchment just to hold it down. I don't even do that with this one. This one is really rough and ready, uh, really, really simple. Okay, so in here we're gonna make our custard. So we have our silken tofu here. This is a really great brand. Tastes almost like the fresh tofu that you get in Asia. Really, really, really lovely. So we'll push, pop this into here. There we go. Looks and tastes a bit like Vermont, basically, if you guys have never had it before. Um, we have our sugar in here. Now, I must say that the, the tofu taste is very, very prominent. So if you guys don't like that taste, then you have to work a bit harder just to cover it up. Some people don't like it. I like it, um, but if you don't, then you could add some spices to it. Um, just to mask the flavour of the tofu because it is quite prominent. We'll add a few drops of vanilla essence in here. Just keeping things really simple. You know, vanilla is quite custody. And then some of this. So this is our corn flour or cornstarch and that's just going to help the custard to set. So about half a tablespoon of this. Into there, and then we will blend it. <laughs> Colleen, oh, you really want to get this 
one, don't you? Colleen is guessing that it's the letter D for day at the end of the rainbow. That's a really good guess, but it's wrong. <laughs> Try again. very quickly, very easily, because it's already very soft. If you go into an Asian supermarket and you find silken tofu, but there are options such as firm silken tofu or soft silken tofu, then go for the soft one if you're making a dessert. The firm silken tofu is better for things like a miso soup, if you want to put it in that, then that's better for that. Okay, so Valentina, she suggested a soya bean, which would, that would be a great idea, but no, it's not, it's not that. I'll give you a clue, it's something to do with today's recipe. Okay, so I just want to show this to you guys, so you can see what it looks like. So it's just like a really silky cream. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see the colour of it, is like a pale brown, like a beigey colour. And the reason why is because of the sugar that I've used in it. Uh, so, you know, I've used this coconut sugar that has, um, you know, a dark kind of caramelly colour to it. Also has a lovely caramelly flavour to it as well. So if you don't want yours to have this colour, if you want it to be more white, um, then use a different type of sugar and it will look white. Okay, so I think... I think, I think that they should be just about ready. Let me see if we have any more questions. Ah, Paul said that the view was good, you could see the colour. See, so you're just going with a bird. Uh, -uh. no. Karen suggested raspberry, no, 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 no. Uh, Anne said, I know this is going back to yesterday's demo, but I wondered if you and other people watching would be interested in a lady by the name of Jenny's Klein. Nourished by nature, who is amazing with fermenting sourdough. Uh, she holds a class in Glasgow, but for, oh yes, if you could, could you include the link um, in the comments, and that would be absolutely amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And also ask, is it raspberry? No, it's not a raspberry. It's not a raspberry. I'm glad you guys are enjoying this so much today. Um, let's see if these are ready. There we go. They are. tartans and as I said earlier we can just pat them down a bit with the back of a spoon just to make a nice recess they can take a bit of beating around you know because they weren't that thin when we put them in anyway you know if you keep rolling them and they're like super 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 thin you might have something to worry about but ours weren't so we can just pat them down like that so that it's got enough of a recess because we really want to make sure that we can get a, a, you know, a good amount of the, um, the, the, the raspberries and the custard in here. So, Colleen said, it's not a soybean. I know, it's not a soybean. Uh, a pot of gold at the end of a rainbow. Well, it's not technically a pot of gold, although... It could, a pot of gold would be a good nickname for it. I'm probably just confusing you now. I am probably just confusing you now. Okay, right, back to the recipe. So we have our custard here. This might be a bit too much custard for these. It depends on you know, what size your tartans are. If you're left with any, um, any custard, then you can actually um, just use the custard on its own. Um, and this actually goes back to a comment that we had earlier today in the community hub where someone said that they didn't have the pastry, they also didn't have the raspberries. And I said, well, actually, I can come up with suggestions of not using even the pastry. So just the custard with the raspberries on its own, if you put that into a tart tin and you bake it, uh, for about 10 to 15 minutes until the custard is just set, let it cool down completely, and then that actually makes a crustless tart. And I ate one earlier today, and it was delicious. So you can do it that way. 
So just to repeat, that is the custard with the raspberries that we're going to put into it. You pop it into a tart tin, muffin tray, whatever it is that you have to hand, um, and bake it in the oven for 10 to 15 minutes, let it cool down, put it in the fridge. Once it's set, you can just take it out of the tart tin, pop it onto your plate and have it like that. So that is an option. Also other, um, I was going to say vegetables. <gasps> fruit that you could put into it. Obviously any berry would work very, very well in this recipe. Berries and custard really go well together. But you could also use something like, um, like a stewed vegetable, a stewed fruit, a stewed fruit. Uh, something like, uh, something like a pear or apple, um, or maybe even grilled peaches or griddled peaches are absolutely lovely. So you could use something like that. You just have to be aware of the fact that we're not really going to be cooking the fruit that's going in here. Um, so if it is a harder fruit, then it's going to need to be pre-cooked and then go into here. So there are lots of different options for this recipe. Now let me have a look here because I think, I think that someone may have guessed what is at the end of the rainbow. So let's have a look. Oh my gosh, so there's a few. <laughs> you guys are really going for it. Dana says, a teddy bear at the end of the rainbow. No, no, no. Uh, you took out about eight minutes from when you said. Did I? Okay, good. Uh, a pot of custard. Yes, yes. It's a pot of custard. It's out at the end of a rainbow. Um, so that is why I said it could also be nicknamed the pot of gold. <laughs> Uh, it's a tart. No, it's a pot. Of oh, vanilla pod. That would be a hard draw. That would be a very hard draw. Uh, and Chef Day, you know I'm rubbish at things like technology, and I'm not sure how to provide a link. But her site is nourished by nature. Okay, so Arpita, would you be able to find a website called Nourished by Nature and pop a link to it in the comments section? That would be great, that would be a huge help, thank you. Justine said, mm, looks good, better than my mayonnaise. What happened to your mayonnaise? Oh, Inna, Inna is already there. Thank you, thank you, thank you for doing that. So Justine, what happened to your mayonnaise? Let us know. Okay, so now we have our custard and I'll just get the raspberries. Now, the raspberries that I'm using are from the freezer and I didn't want to get them out too early because I don't want them to start melting and then to get a bit too squishy and just release like far too much liquid. So I just uh, took them straight from the, uh, the freezer, but you can use fresh ones if you want to. So we'll just pop some of our custard in here. So you can do this two ways. You can either put the custard in first and then the raspberries on top, or you can mix them in together. So actually I think we'll do one one way and then one the other way so that you can see. Pussy cat came in. Hello. So we'll just pop some of our raspberries on here and you really don't need to be too precious about this. This is what I would call a messy tart and the messier it looks, the tastier it looks. That's absolutely fine. I don't want this to be perfect and look all like, you know, pretentious. I want it to look messy. Um, okay, and with this one, I've already got some of the... There we go. Just pop it in there. I've already got some of the custard in the base and I'm just going to mix this in. And then pop the raspberries in. I want to make sure that I get a lot of the raspberries there. Because you know, the raspberries are good. Really good. So now just to say, this is one of my recipes for a dessert that's more like a grown-up dessert. So it isn't too sweet. So if you want it sweeter, you're going to have to add some more sweetness to it. So let me just pop these into the oven, get them going. Right, there we go. Let's see how you guys are doing. It was all runny and yellow. Okay, right. Yes, so um, I do occasionally have a problem with the mayonnaise recipe. Um, sometimes it just splits and I have not been able to figure out why. Uh, I think that it might be something to do with heat because aquafaba can be a bit sensitive to heat. 
Um, but it does happen to me occasionally. Um, what you can do, I would suggest, Justine, is just doing a small recipe because you don't want to make a big amount of mayonnaise and then it splits because then you've got all this oil to deal with as well and what are you going to do with it? Um, you know, because we're told like not to put it down the sink and you know, and also you've just you know, used up a load of ingredients. So if you're not too sure about a recipe, it's a really great idea to reduce it to the smallest amounts that you can actually make uh, and try it again, just so that you're not wasting too much. So you can do that, but just uh, be aware of the aquifer but not being out on the counter too much. Sometimes I think that might have been the issue for me. Um, you know, and just occasionally, occasionally, I would say maybe like 1% of the times that I've made it, and I make it a lot, but 1% of the time it has actually split. Um, so uh, let me just see. Thank you for putting that link in again. Dana, can you use arrowroot instead of corn to make because Yes, absolutely, you can. Arrowroot would work really, really well. Um, and it said, what temperature does pastry case go into the oven? Sorry, you probably said, but I've not been concentrating. No, I didn't say. And it's even on my notes, which are just underneath the camera there. And I still didn't say, still didn't. This is why you guys are here to remind me about things like this. The oven was on 180 degrees. Yes, the oven was on 180 degrees. Um, so just to say as well that when we give the instructions for the cook-alongs, we do also have that information in there just so that we can get everybody ready. So we give information on the ingredients list and the equipment list and anything that they need to prepare in advance. Um, and then, you know, we can all kind of like hit the ground running together and you guys don't have to wait for your oven to heat up or something like that. So if you do want to cook along with some of our recipes, then do head on over to our community hub because we will put the information into there only and not onto the page. Um, so I think that we will be doing more of those because they have proved quite popular um, for some people. And I we will do some uh, reasonable time, a respectable time for all of our American friends and get you guys cooking along with us together as well. <sighs> over to you. Do you have any questions for me? I'm going to shut up for a second. Any questions? Any questions? Okay. Any questions you guys want to ask? <laughs> okay. So I know we're having like some good polls being asked today as well. So it'll be really interesting to see the results of those after the show. Uh, love the recipes, thank you so much. It's a pleasure, it's an absolute pleasure, Bobby. Justine, how long did you say it went into the oven for? Okay, so first of all, uh, the tart in, the tart base on its own went into the oven for, I think, 10 minutes. Uh, until you can see that it's cooked and it's golden brown. And then we're gonna put it in the oven for about another 10 to 15 minutes, and that's all, um, until the, the custard starts to set around the edge a bit, so you'll be able to see that. That will be something that will change, so that's a good thing to know to look out for. It will start to set just around the edge, so the color will change a little bit, and also you'll see, I guess, like that it's not so shiny, as well, just run it, and then you'll know that that edge is starting to cook, so then you can take it out. Uh, Johnny said, would this recipe work just as well for one big tart rather than individual ones? Yes, it would. Yes, it would. But I think that you would have to adjust the time that it's in for. Uh, because if you think, you know, we, whenever you've got something small in the oven, it takes a lot less time for the heat to get to the center than if you've got something big. It takes a lot longer for the heat to get to the centre. Um, so that's the one thing that you might have to watch out for. So you might have to have, to have it in, in the oven for longer. Um, and also I would suggest that when you are removing it from the tart tin, you do it very, 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 very carefully. And there is one technique that I have, which is I use, um, sometimes I'll use two of these in one go. If I've got something, you know, round and I really want to get underneath it, but it feels like a bit floppy, you know, it's a bit unstable, then I might use two of these. Um, if you've got somebody else who can help you out with that, obviously like, that's a really good thing to, to do as well. Um, and, you know, if you've got your plate, 
then maybe just slide it off. You know, loosen it, really loosen it, and then slide it off onto your plate because I think that's one thing that might be a bit, a bit uncertain with it as well. But it would look lovely. It would look really, really lovely as, um, as a really, really big tart. Um, that would be great. And of course, you can use lots of other berries in it as well. I think if you're talking about a big tart, you know, having uh, some uh, blueberries on it. Uh, just to break it up, you know, make the colours a bit more interesting would be really, really lovely. Uh, he has a removable bottom, luckily. Yes, 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 yes. Tart tins with removable bottoms are so much easier to work with um, than the ones that don't. <laughs> the tart tin, that is. <laughs> Uh, yes, I'm really glad that you clarified that for us, Johnny. Um, uh, yes, so the tart tin has a removable base. I would always suggest that if you're going to buy any tart tins, then make sure it has a removable base. You'll be so grateful of that in the future. Okay, so I'm just going to go and see if our tarts are ready. bring these over to you guys so that you can see how they are doing can you guys see that there we go the colors just slightly changing around the edge here okay so as i was saying i don't know if you guys could see that but the edge was changing colour, um, so it had the, the edge of the custard that is had started changing colour. So that's when we know that it's almost done. But I think just a few more minutes and we should be there. So just to recap on this recipe, really, really, really super easy recipe. Not as easy as the raspberry dark chocolate tart that I shared with you last week, uh, but easier than the more difficult one I'll be sharing with you next week. Um, so first of all, we started off with our puff pastry. This is the puff pastry that I used. Just Roll is accidentally vegan, which is fantastic. This one is also gluten free, but of course, if you're not gluten free, you can use the one that has gluten in it. And I know that these are much more easy to get hold of in the UK at the moment than a bag of flour. So great thing to use. Um, and then we use some milk. And so that was just to um, put onto the pastry. Uh, you can also use aquafaba for that, or a little bit of oil. So that's just a wash to put onto the pastry, put it into our tart tins, and then popped it into the oven. So that's the blind bake it, because as I mentioned earlier, every time I would not blind bake a tart that is quite wet, the base just wouldn't be cooked through properly. And I don't think it's very nice to have raw pastry at the bottom. So make sure you blind bake it. And then we use our silken tofu, some coconut sugar, our vanilla essence, and also our cornstarch, our corn flour to make a custard. And then we pop that on top with our frozen raspberries. You can use fresh if you have them. I just happen to have frozen raspberries. And that is it. That is so, 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 so simple. And I think that these might just about be ready. Let's have a look. Um, Dana said, wow, they look delicious. Good, good, good. Uh, Gloria, they are. I had gluten-free pastry all week ago. Good, good. Um, Justine said, is that why the pastry goes in first? Um, so the pastry went in first, yes, so that I could blind bake it so that it wasn't raw at the bottom. Because if I put a wet mixture into a pastry case, I find that the pastry at the bottom is always raw and it's, I think that's disgust, really disgusting, really foul. Um, so yes, that's why. Uh, Karen said, what brand of tofu is this? I'll bring it over to you guys. Here, this is Clear Spring. Their tofu is really, really, really good. And of course, as you can see, it's organic as well. Okay, it's tart time. Right, okay, so here we go, guys. Here are our two tarts from the oven. Really super hot, of course. So just being very, very careful with them. So you can see that, you know, these are like two very, very different um, different looks. You know, we have the fresh raspberries 
uh, poking out, sorry, the, you know, the raspberries poking out the top here. Um, so we can see them more. This one is more of a messy one, so it really depends on what you prefer. I think that both of them are really, really lovely. Um, I will see if I can get them out and pop them onto plates without burning myself too much. There we go. They're okay. They're okay. They haven't stuck too much. So one thing, one very, very good tip for you guys actually, when I was putting the pastry into the tart tins, I didn't really press down into those recesses because I knew that it would be very difficult for me to then take them out. And of course, you know, if I'm doing that on camera with you guys, like I want it to be as easy as possible. So let me just get a plate for these guys. There we go. Nice bright plate here to have them on. Uh, Jester, Jester, what a lovely name. Uh, is it shortcrust pastry? No, we used puff pastry today, but you could use shortcrust pastry. That's absolutely fine. Absolutely fine. Okay, so I'll bring these guys over to you. Karen, is it a cup of tea at the end of the rainbow? No, no, but that, you, you guys come up with really good suggestions. This is going to be our new thing, you know, what's at the end of a rainbow? Uh, no, the thing that's at the end of a rainbow is a pot of custard, of course. So let's show these to you guys. Oh, there we go. There we go. Obviously, I don't want to tip them up too much because otherwise they will fall off the plate. Okay. And so just for the Final, final, final touch. We will add some icing sugar, also known as powdered sugar. And so, you know, these are, as I said earlier, they quite, they're quite rough looking. They're quite rustic. Um, we're not going to be too precious about them at all. And one of the ways that we can just like, you know, pretty them up at the end is by adding some powdered sugar. And so did I grease the tins before putting pastry? No, I didn't. Um, but the reason why I didn't do that is because my tart tins um, are still quite new. So they're quite non-stick. But, you know, if you've had your tart tin for a while, then it might be that it needs a bit of oiling. So you guys will have to figure that one out. There we go. Okay, right there. Oh, there we go. <laughs> there they are. <laughs> With me making sure that they don't fall off the plate. But you can see just by adding the icing sugar, they look a lot prettier. So you can have these hot or cold. If you have them, if you're going to have them cold, then just wait until they cool down to add the icing sugar because otherwise the icing sugar does actually melt on the hot ones. Um, and you know, it's starting to do it. So um, if you're going to have them hot, then add the icing sugar just before you serve them. If you're going to have them cold, then just wait for them to cool down and then add the icing sugar. But it's nice either way. So guys, I think that that's it. That's been a long one today for such a simple recipe. <sighs> I hope that you guys who have cooked along with us at home have really enjoyed um, doing this at the same time because that's something that we would really, really love to do more of with you. And tomorrow, it's not going to be me here. Well, I, I'm going to be here, but I'm not going to be on Facebook Live. It's going to be Arbiter. So, I, I don't know what she's making today, actually. What are you making uh, tomorrow, Arbiter? If you can say, if you can say, that would be great. If you can just say before we are going to go. Um, Kelly said hello from Yellowknife, Canada. Yellowknife? That sounds like an awesome place. Thank you for what you're doing every day. No problem at all. So, as I was saying, guys, we are here every single day at midday. Join us. Let us know how you're getting on with making our recipes. We would really love to see. It could always help with troubleshooting as well, because sometimes there might be a bit of a difference in some of our ingredients, especially if we're in different countries well so you know sometimes things don't go smoothly but we're always there to give you advice as well so please do join our community hub which is our facebook group and keep posting your pictures and your recipes and your ideas and your suggestions for what we can share with you okay so um 
Oh, Katie said Northwest Territories. Oh, so you guys are having your own conversation. That's really nice. Really nice. Okay, I'm going to go and eat these. And you guys are going to go and have a lovely day.